Hello and welcome back to this next video. We're going to do another test for independence. Uh, I, I suspect you're getting lots of practice with these exercises because the, the calculations for all of the tests we've done so far in this module are, ex well, they're the same. I guess there's been some differences when we're looking at equalities across proportions, but for the most part, you probably see the patterns in all of these calculations that we're doing. So in this one, we're looking at, uh, so here we're working with similar data from previous exercises. Uh, we have the brand of vehicle and marital status. So what's our dealership has reason to believe that whether a customer is married or single will influence the brand of vehicle they want to buy. So let's see, do we have evidence here to show that there's um, in that these two variables, marital status and, and brand of vehicle, are they independent or not? So our null hypothesis is that they are independent our alternative hypothesis is that they are not independent. As simple as that. We can do this at 05 level of significance. So there's part A done. Part B, compute all of our expected frequencies and the test statistics. So again, we are working up to, first we need these expected frequencies, which are the row totals times the column totals. So here I'm calling my rows I, and these are J, and divided by our total number of observations. So again, I don't know if I need to explain this formula every time we use it, but for example, this first cell, we're gonna be using, here's our, our row total, times the column total, right? If I'm looking at married Ford owners, so married Ford owners, those are the relevant totals. We multiply those together and divide it by total number of observations. So if we get our calculator out here, this is 160 times 295 divided by 557. So 84.7. 84.7. So if we do the same thing then for GMC, well, we just move this over. Now we're looking at this column total. So 165 times 295 divided by 557, 87.4. Moving over, then we have this one. So 232 times 295 divided by 557. 122.9 and then if we go down now we'll go back to forward so our column total comes back to 160 but now we need this 262 is our relevant uh, row total so 160 times 262 divided by 557 75.2 and let's keep going. Oh, 75.3, I guess, if I round it properly. Okay, and then oh, let's go back here. Now we're at 165. 165 times 262, 77.6. You know, if there's anything you've learned in a statistics course by now is that it is full of tedious calculations. My gosh, it just never ends. So the next one, 232 times 262 divided by 557, 109 point, oops, 109.1. Okay, and again, we don't need these totals for anything. It's a nice double check. You can add all, calculate all those totals and they, they should absolutely be the same as your totals here. So it's a nice way to double check your calculations, but we'll skip over this for now. So there we have uh, all of our observed values, our expected values. Now we can calculate this test statistic, which again, by now, if you've been watching other videos in this module, 
you're an expert at calculating this test statistic. So we need to calculate the difference between individual uh, obser observed values, expected values, divided by that expected value, and then we add all of these up. So the f I'll do the first couple and then I'll skip through the rest. So the first one is married, so there's our observed value, there's our expected value. So 90 minus 84.7, we square it and we divide it by the expected value 84.7 and I have 0.33. So 0 0.33. Then the next one, I have to be careful, oops. I don't want to erase that, seven. The next one we'll do, there we go, is going to be, let's just stick with Ford, but we'll do the single, so 75, three and 70. So this is 70 minus 75.3, so that's the difference. We square that difference. We divide it by the expected frequency, 75.3, and we have 0.37. Okay, so we do the same for this, and this one, and this one, and this one. Comparing always the, the corresponding expected frequency with each of those observed frequencies. We take all those differences, we square them, our same process. So I'm gonna cheat because I've got all of these calculated here in front of me. So we have 0.33, we have 0.37. The next one that we would do would be the married uh, GMC owners, and that would give us a value of 2.1. And then the single GMC would be 2.3. Married Chevy would give us uh, 0.54, and single Chevy owners would be 0 0.60. So there's all of those differences squared, divided by the expected value. Now we add all of those up to find our test statistic. So here, let's uh, just quickly crunch those. So 0 0.33 plus 0.37 plus 2.1, plus 2.3, plus 0.54, plus 0.6. Oh, I think I missed a point in there, didn't I? Yeah, I missed a point. 0 0.33, this is why I don't like this calculator. Plus 2.1, plus 2.3, plus 0.54, plus 0.6, that looks better. 6.24, so there's Finally, our test statistic, we're good. Now we need to find the corresponding p-value. So our distribution here, again, the degrees of freedom for these, it's n minus one times m minus one, n number of rows, m number of columns. So here I have two minus one, times three minus one, so this is one times two, so I have two degrees of freedom. Our level of significance, alpha is 0.05, so we're getting familiar with this chi-squared value. Two degrees of freedom, alpha is 0.05, critical value 5.99. So when we come back here, we have a critical value 5.991, our test statistic is 6.24. We reject if that test statistic is greater than our critical value, which in this case it is greater than that critical value, so we can reject. So using the critical value approach, we do have evidence to reject this null hypothesis. We have evidence to show that these two variables, uh, marital status and the brand of vehicle, these two variables are not independent, or in other words, we have evidence to show that they are dependent on one another. Uh, that's the, the p-value. I guess that's technically what we were asked to find. So our p-value, uh, let's see, sorry, our test statistic was 6.24. So that's somewhere in here. So our p-value is somewhere in here. 
So our p-value is something greater than 0.025, but less than 0.05. So the p-value is less than 0.05, greater than 0.025. So again, same conclusion. Thankfully, we reject our null hypotheses. We have evidence to support the dependency between the brand of vehicle that a person buys and their marital status. Couldn't imagine what that might, why that might be, but hey, these are just made up practice problems anyway, so it doesn't matter. Can't read into it too much. So there we go. We've got everything done. That's it. Hopefully these problems, uh, if you've gone through a few of them by now, they should be coming a little bit simple to do because they're all so similar in how they're done, especially these calculations here. They're all the same. Okay, so thanks again for watching. Uh, we'll move on to another topic here shortly. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.